YouTube gang. What's going on, fellas? Okay. Quick video. At least I think it's going to be quick. I always think they're going to be quick, and they're never that quick. This one might be quick. All right. So I wanted to talk about radical honesty on the SR journey. So I think that honesty is one thing we could say is the foundation of any spiritual practice. If it's going to work, if it's going to actually yield results, if the seeds we're planting are actually going to bear fruit, it's going to have to be in the soil of honesty. Like this building, this structure, however you want to think about this, I think, I think of honesty as a foundation for spiritual growth. So, as we all know, at least I hope we know by now, in the world as it is, if you have a position of high power, like President of the United States, let's say, uh, you're a head of state, you are the CEO of a super large company. This isn't to throw all CEOs under the bus, but I'm talking, you know, Apple, Microsoft, things like this. I'm talking about your Fortune 500 companies. If you are a billionaire or somewhere near that, the chances that you had to do something dishonest to get there are very high. Basically, the richer you are, I'd say the greater the chances that you had to do something dishonest along the way to get there. And it's just the way of the world. So you can build a very large financial foundation on lies. And that is, as far as I'm concerned, the, the primary structure of the pharmaceutical industry as it currently stands. That's not to say that there aren't people that work in that industry that have good intentions. That isn't to say that there haven't been developments in that field that have yielded positive results, but they're few and far between. For the most part, pharmaceutical drugs come with a long list of side effects. Like I recently saw a commercial for one on TV. You know, it's funny, it's funny that they even advertise for this stuff. It's illegal in a lot of countries to do that, but in America, it's totally legal. So there was an ad for a drug that deals with acne. I think it was. It was either acne or rosacea, some skin condition. So the drug may or may not treat that condition. There's a chance that it will treat that condition. And then they go and list all the side effects. And you guys all know what I'm talking about. And the side effects was everything from like stroke to heart failure to death. It was, it was most of the commercial was the side effects. So you got people out there that are willing to take a chance on something that might make their skin look better and it might kill them, right? And so the people that are promoting this drug, they have a lot of intelligence, mind power, data, resources at their disposal. And I'm sure they're not so stupid as to not know what they're doing. I think they know what they're doing. I think they know that they are engineering demand for a product that doesn't need to exist. There are ways to have healthy skin, like having a very clean diet, getting in the sun more often, fasting occasionally, basically detoxing. Most skin conditions are, are from toxicity in the body. And you can do your own research on this. This is a scientific fact. So this is what I'm getting at is the people in these industries, like the pharmaceutical industry, they know this. They're well aware. And they're building a fortune on lies. But their fortune is worldly. And when they die, they can't take any of it with them. And a lot of these people that are very, very rich in the worldly sense are not happy. They're not satisfied. They can't stop. They're like drug addicts. It's never enough. Two Ferraris doesn't do it. I need 10 Ferraris. Now I need four mansions. Look at somebody like Oprah, you know, buying all this land in Hawaii and then asking for donations from the general public to help the people that have been displaced while her, her land sits there. It's just fine. And she's got enough money to solve the whole problem herself if she really wanted to. So if you trust Oprah, you know, I've got a bridge to sell you, as the saying goes. These people have built their fortunes through dishonesty. But their fortunes are temporary. They're financial, they're physical, they're worldly. They're not going to stick around. They really don't mean anything. In the grand scheme of things, we all exist for like a second. And then we die, and then what? 
right? So if you're a spiritual person, you understand that you are not of this world, although you are in this world. You are of spiritual origin, and where you came from is also similar to where you are headed, right? We, we, we take this pass through this physical expression, and then we leave it behind. And in the grand scheme of time, the big picture, our lives are very short. So what is it that we should really be cultivating? Well, yeah, we need money. That's important. But let's use this money <clears throat> as an analogy for what we're really cultivating here, especially as retainers. We're cultivating life force energy. We're cultivating virtue, character, our spiritual nature, our spiritual power, our ability to manifest things. And these things, as we grow spiritually, aren't so much about vanity. It's not about having excess. We want as much as we need, and we want to have a positive impact on the world. You know, the main reason I would like to make a lot of money is so that I can accomplish more things in this world and do more good. Live a more comfortable life, have more freedom so I can be creative more often, which is something that I really value highly. So that being said, money in the material sense, we call it currency and we spend it. So money is a form of energy in the physical realm. We, we exchange money for food, for shelter, for energy, etc., etc. So in the same sense, we exchange our spiritual energy for other things on the spiritual level. So as we are retaining our life force energy as retainers, we're cultivating that sexual creative energy. It's staying in the body instead of leaving the body. And that gives us access to a seemingly infinite reservoir of energy, of healing energy, creative energy. So we are stacking up our spiritual bank account in a sense. But just to retain is not enough. And that's the point of this video. This is where radical honesty comes into play. Because so a lot of retainers I've noticed are very worried about, let's say if I have a wet dream, it's like, oh, no, I lost energy. Or if I relapsed, oh, no, I lost energy. Well, you're losing energy all the time in various ways. I mean, every time I do a workout, I lose a little bit of energy. I expend that energy. And if I don't replenish that energy in the form of sunlight, food and water and rest, then I'm going to start deteriorating. Right. So. The expenditure of energy, there has to be a, an exchange uh, or else I go into debt. So a lot of people tend to think of things like in, in the terms of credit. So you know what happens when you use your credit card to buy everything. If you don't pay that back, you start accumulating debt. And then it ends up costing you more in the long run than it should have if you just paid up front. So this is where radical honesty comes into the picture. What I mean by radical honesty is I mean that, let's say if the cashier gives you more change than you were due, and you know that, you don't walk away with that extra money thinking that you won something. You're honest in that moment. You say, ma'am, you gave me too much change. Here's the money back. You do the right thing. We all know what it is. You see, I don't have to sit here and coach anybody on what's honest and what's dishonest. Because you know, unless you're a pathological sociopath, which I don't think you are if you're still listening, I think you have a conscience, you know, you already know. So the thing is, we need to stop making compromises in the area of honesty. And I think this even extends into like people pleasing, like, like, does this make me look fat kind of thing? Well, maybe we shouldn't go around saying that. It makes that dress makes you look fat, but we could be honest. Like if we didn't like the way it looked, we say, oh, I think maybe there's a better look for you or I don't like the way it fits or something of that nature. I hope you catch my drift. We want to be kind. We want to be polite, but we need to be honest. We don't want to exchange that energy because every time we lie, even a little white lie, you think you're getting away with something. Even if it's like a great example of this, by the way, is if you ever live with the roommate, you go in the fridge and it's like, I could have a little bit of his whatever. He's not going to notice. And maybe you get away with it. 
But see, the thing is, you didn't get away with anything. You never do. That's an exchange of energy. You could look at that as like using your credit card. Maybe you got something in the short term, but you're going to pay later on. And this is how it works in the spiritual domain when it comes to honesty is every time we do something that is even a little bit dishonest, it's like using credit. Maybe we get something quick, but we're going to pay more in the long run. And this also applies to procrastination. Let's use like washing a dish, for example. If I make a meal, like I just did, I actually wash the dishes immediately and put them away. And you know what? When you wash the dish right after you eat, it's very easy. It comes right off. But if you let it sit in the sink for a while, you come back, you have to, you let those dishes accumulate. Now you're piling up debt. You go in there and it's going to... Video got cut off there. So I just want to wrap this up. I was just talking about the analogy of the dishes. If you don't clean the dish right away, you let it pile up in the sink. You go and you wash it later. That stuff's caked on there. And now you're going to spend more time and energy cleaning those dishes and putting them away than you would if you would have just done it right away. That's, that's like credit accumulating interest. And then you got to pay the debt. So this, this stuff all matters. On the spiritual level, it matters a lot. So I will probably make more videos on this subject because this is something that I feel really passionate about. That if we're going to take our spiritual journey to the length of retaining our life force energy and abstaining from sexual activity and being celibate for a period of time, abstaining from lust, then why not take it a step further and practice radical honesty? And this is a daily constant practice. There are going to be opportunities every day to do something maybe just slightly dishonest. And as you progress spiritually, they, they get a little bit more and more subtle. These things get very subtle because your consciousness is expanding and you're noticing more things. So the tests get a little bit more subtle. But as we pass those tests, that's like paying your credit card off like real quick. And your credit goes up. And it's your spiritual energy goes up because you're wasting less of it. It costs more energy to lie than it does to tell the truth. That's really the essence of what I'm getting at here, you guys. It also costs more energy to pretend than it does to be authentic. So let's say if you go throughout your day and you find yourself just utterly exhausted. Well, maybe you've just been working really hard and that's great. This is a you being honest with yourself situation. Or maybe you've been trying too hard. Maybe you've been presenting a version of yourself that isn't entirely authentic. Because I've found when I am entirely authentic throughout my day, I use less energy. It's effortless. I don't have to try to be myself. I do have to try to be somebody else. So I think that just about wraps this video up. It's supposed to be short. It wasn't. That never is. But I hope you guys got something out of it. And uh, all right. Peace and love.